Hi, this is a lecture video on phase change and heat transfer, or boiling is a cooling process. So you all know about the three phases, solid, liquid, and gas. Or if you are sophisticated in your understanding of phases of matter, you might even know about the phase diagram, which shows different states matter can exist in depending on ambient pressure and temperature. Generally, at a given pressure, the hotter the material, the more likely it is to be in liquid phase or gas phase. Or at a given temperature, you could force gas into liquid state by applying more pressure. And this is the phase diagram for water. This is a sort of a general phase diagram for some substance that shows the same idea. The hotter the material, the more likely it is to be in liquid or gas phase. And the higher the applied pressure, the more likely it is to be in liquid phase and possibly in the solid phase if it's in the right um, temperature zone. <laughs> when you want to change phase of matter, boil water for example, what you normally do is transfer heat. And many of you know about different heat transfer mechanisms, conduction, convection, and radiation. So that's what forms and informs our everyday intuition. Taking water, for example, when you cool it down, put it into freezer, um, for example, and it freezes, it turns into solid. When you heat it up, maybe put it on a stove top, and it boils, turns into gas. There are lots of everyday experiences that go into forming this intuition. Boiling, hot, freezing, cold. What would you say if I told you your intuition is misaligned? Specifically, boiling is a cooling process. A liquid is cooled when boiling occurs. It's not an easy thing to believe, so let me show you a video. For this video, a test tube of water was placed in a bell jar, and the air inside the bell jar was vacuumed out. The water begins to boil when the ambient pressure is lowered enough so that it is equal to or less than the saturated vapor pressure of water. Intuitively, the ambient pressure was pressing water molecules together. So when the pressure is lowered enough, water molecules separate from each other, turning from liquid to gas phase. Now watch carefully as the water continues to boil, the temperature of the remaining water starts to decrease. And if I had a better pump, I could boil this water until it begins to freeze. In fact, you can find videos where people do do that by searching for the phrase freezing by boiling, for example on YouTube. But is this cooling something special that happens only with the special equipment like fancy vacuum pumps? Um, this is where I want you to read figure 1.15 carefully. Figure 1.15. This is a plot of temperature of a substance which starts out as ice at minus 20 degrees Celsius and you start to apply heat. On the horizontal axis, we are plotting the amount of heat added per mass. We can imagine we have one kilogram ice to start out with. So this would be one kilojoule, two kilojoule, and so on. As you initially add heat, the temperature of the ice increases. And this flat part is where ice is melting into water. The temperature begins to rise again after all the ice has melted and then flattening out where water is being vaporized, that is, boiling into steam. 
and when all the water has been turned into steam, the temperature of the steam rises again. I hope this graph uh, doesn't seem unfamiliar. If you have not seen this graph before, I hope this at least uh, makes intuitive sense. After all, this is how we define a melting point and a boiling point. When you have a mixture of ice and water, if they are all well mixed into a thermal equilibrium, you know it is at 0 degrees Celsius. When you have a boiling water, mixture of water and steam, as long as it is boiling at 1 atmosphere of pressure, you know it is at 100 degrees Celsius. You don't have to know how long the pot of water has been boiling to know what its temperature is, as long as there is some water left. Now, here's what I want you to consider. If, as you go along the horizontal axis, you're adding heat, why isn't that added heat showing up as temperature of the ice water rising, or temperature of water and steam rising? Your textbook talks about latent heat, latent heat of fusion for melting, and latent heat of vaporization for boiling. This is the amount of heat needed to break bonds between molecules, turning solid into liquid, and liquid into gas. And here is another way to look at this. This breaking of bonds takes energy. You have to put in enough energy to free a molecule that's bound to a neighboring molecule. When this energy is taken from the surrounding, the surrounding is cooled by this process. This is why you see, as the ice melts, the temperature of the mixture stays constant. Because the cooling effect of ice melting is exactly taking away the heat input from outside. And this is also why, as the water boils, the temperature of the mixture stays constant. Because the cooling effect of water boiling is exactly taking away the heat input from outside. This latent heat of vaporization is quite substantial. As you see in this graph, it takes more energy to boil one kilogram of water already at 100 degrees Celsius than the amount of energy it takes to bring one kilogram of very cold ice to 100 degrees Celsius. You can look at the distance along the horizontal axis to see how much heat it takes to boil away all the water. Over the next few weeks, we are going to be referring to internal energy quite a bit. Please remember that the kind of internal energy we will be interested in comes in two primary forms, kinetic energy and potential energy. In both cases, we are talking of kinetic energy and potential energy of microscopic objects, molecules. All molecules either bounce around in gas and liquid forms or vibrate in solid form especially. The kinetic energy, the average kinetic energy of this movement is reflected in the temperature measurements. The potential energy of molecules since most molecules attract each other through intermolecular forces, the farther away molecules are from each other, there is more potential energy. Um, and this is reflected in the state of matter. The solid state has the most negative potential energy. It requires the greatest amount of energy to free the molecules from its neighbors. And the gas state has the least negative potential energy. To a good approximation, the, it's zero for many gases at room temperature. In fact, that's the ideal gas approximation. So this internal energy isn't really a new form of energy. It is still a form of mechanical energy, potential plus kinetic energy, when you take the molecular view of matter. To wrap up this video, please think about situations when you are near a substance, well, most likely water, 
uh, that was turning into gas, evaporation, or um, turning into liquid from gas, condensation. And which of the two did you become cooler than you otherwise would have been? In which case did you become warmer? 